I think one of the hardest things to do when people first leave the school system is relax into this new way of living with our children. We're so compelled to follow schedules and plans and what's next that we forget how this isn't a natural way to approach life. We're continuing to de-school, but we're wondering, what do we do? We approach parenting and educating our children as if we're in a work setting, goals and plans and projections, and our own school experience conditioned us to do that, no doubt. But home is not the same as work. It's hard to shift gears from planning and laying it all out. That feels so familiar. And there are a lot of moving parts, so I'm not saying you don't need to get organized. But what you're organizing is different when you're unschooling. And what's challenging about de-schooling is we really are tuning into the here and now. The answers to our what next question isn't going to be in a calendar or a curriculum. The only way you're going to know what to do next is consulting that child standing in front of you. And another complication, they may not know. They have probably had a lot of school indoctrination. They've had somebody telling them what to do all the time. They're going to need you to help them move in that direction. But when you're more observant and you watch them, you'll know what to do. They change over time. But if you focus on the basic connections, you'll be able to pivot and do what's needed. You'll see what's needed. You'll move in that direction. Which brings me to the key you need, partnering with the kids. Every family is going to do this differently. Every child and every parent brings personalities and interests and preferences and dislikes. And when you partner with them, you get access to that information. You get access to information about yourself, too, that you maybe didn't even realize because you were distracted by checking boxes and doing someone else's agenda. Partnering when it comes to parenting has to do with walking alongside our children. It's moving away from the coercion being the motivator and helping a child learn more about autonomy. Sometimes this is hard because no one did this with us when we were younger. So we're learning right alongside them. So yes, it will take some self-examining on our parts as well as helping our kids navigate the path. But a few quick suggestions for moving in this direction. Listening more and talking less. (laughs) Not only is this a great tool to be showing and helping our kids learn, but it will give us more access to what's going on with them. So often we think we know what motivated some behavior, but after listening, we see our first guess maybe wasn't right. Some adults have a habit of talking over the kids. It's good to notice if this is something you could work on. Trusting that everyone in the family has something important to say or something they'd like to do. We can see on social media how often parents are dismissing our kids' wants and needs. Partnering on this parenting path moves us in a different direction from that. Recognizing that the children in our family deserve to have their wants and needs valued too. Another aspect of parenting in a partnership way is helping to create an environment where the kids can be successful, giving them the space and the tools they need to bring an idea to life. Not always having to win the argument or have the last word on everything is important, and it's usually not how we were raised. So this is something that might be a good exercise for some of you to do. See what it's like to give your kids the last word in the argument. This is really the bottom line. They love us and we love them. And all any of us want is to have the people that love us most value our interests and listen to us when we talk. I used to have chickens and guineas when we lived on a ranch. So I wanted an excuse to use this guy. It's totally unrelated. I want us to get practical. What specifically are we supposed to be doing while we're de-schooling when we're using these partnership principles? First is to play more. Do you need more games, cards, dice, fun apps, chalk, paint, tools to build? Just yesterday, Jackson, my eight-year-old grandson, made this huge thing out of tape and paper and post-it notes 
and all my daughter's Girl Scout badges that he taped onto note paper. I think the point was turning it into a kite-like thing with a fan that he found in the closet. I think there was some Minecraft connection to it, too. I don't really know what the point was, but we played with all those materials for a couple of hours. And yes, there are little pieces all over my bedroom floor. I may never know what all he learned from that, but that's not the important part. Playing, taking an idea and moving it to reality. It doesn't always have to be board games. It could be forts out of cushions in the living room. But if you need help embracing play, if this is something that's hard for you, and it is for a lot of people, I'll put some more links to dive deeper. Educational research supports the idea that playing more is the right path to take for the kids. Enjoy your time with them. So often kids want time with their parents where they're not being instructed or hurried. This may be a whole new way of approaching daily life with them. You might be surprised how much easier it is to enjoy the experience when you've dropped a lot of the unnecessary expectations. Don't be in such a rush that you skip past simply enjoying each other's company. It can be as simple as a wink from across the room or snuggling next to them when they're on the couch, taking them out for a dip cone at Dairy Queen, whatever helps them see that you enjoy their company, that you like spending time with them. Maybe it means saying something like, tell me more about that, instead of going to the kitchen to start dinner or going to move the laundry. That little five-minute interaction will be worth so much more in how your kids feel valued. We resist, I think, because we think it's going to take a ton of time, but they don't need or probably even want a ton of time, just five minutes more. How can you make their world sparkle more? Literally and figuratively, what would make their eyes light up? What would be so fun? Putting up a tent in the living room, grabbing safari gear and putting on a Jurassic Park music or the movie or Jumanji. I'm ordering a neon sign for my grandson's room that is a blue and green among us sign. He's going to be so excited. I think when I first started this unschooling journey, I thought I'd sparkle up the subjects so they'd be more fun. That's not what I mean. It's sparkling up whatever brings them joy. It has zero to do with academics. So don't go in that direction. More joy means more connection. More connection means more information for you. So you can know how to add more resources or sparkle to their lives. The goal is really a full, rich life. And each of us gets to determine how we interpret that, including our kids. What would they consider wonderful? What do they enjoy? You may have to spend a lot of time observing them to see their preferences. They may not know what to suggest if you ask them to tell you, but these clues you'll get from observing them will help you know more about them. Brainstorming with them about activities they could do if they're bored is one way. Wander around the house with them to help them see what their options are. When we first brought Michael home from school, he didn't really know what to do with his time. He was so used to someone else, me primarily, managing his time for him. So we went around room by room with a clipboard to see what's something fun that he could do in his bedroom or in the living room or the kitchen or the backyard or the garage. And I'm not saying parents have to entertain their kids all day long. But they can help them get started, help them find things they may be overlooking or didn't even realize they could do without you. Helping them see all their choices will be empowering for them. How about brainstorming about what the family can do together? Do you need a game night or a movie marathon or maybe Friday nights are good for Mario Kart or learn some new card games or maybe make your own pizza night where everyone cooks together or or go fly a kite, or listening to an audio book all together with popcorn and hot cocoa, turn it into an event to do as a family. Maybe you could go to the Unschooling Mom to Mom Pinterest boards for ideas. I have boards like Family Fun, Cabin Fever, Staycation Ideas, boards for things to do in the backyard for each of the four seasons. If you need ideas, that's a great place to go. Maybe you'll be venturing beyond the backyard and out into the community. What would a tourist like to do? Where would they like to go? That's what your kids kind of are. And they're not going to know about interesting things that are within driving range or when cool museums offer discounts or even farther away. So go to Google and look up 365 things to do with kids in whatever the biggest city near you is. 
I've seen 365 things to do with kids in Austin or Memphis or Los Angeles. And when you put that in, you'll get more links that are similar, like crazy family adventures or family fun in Atlanta. You have tools to help you to be a really great tour guide for your kids. Maybe you'll be adding in community service projects or doing hikes together that you want to go on. I have some tools for you to use. Unschooling mom to mom on Pinterest and at the blog. Remember Googling fun options with your kids. And if you're in the membership group, you have access to PDFs I've made to help you with brainstorming. I'll put those in the circle. And if you're not in the membership, the brainstorming guide is a great tool to help you when you're brainstorming with the kids. Prompt ideas, places to write down their suggestions, even more suggestions from me. I really recommend that you use this to help you when you're thinking, oh, so we're not doing academics per se, and we're de-schooling. What are we doing instead? So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I put up another video. I have a lot of ideas that can help you through this de-schooling process and figuring out how to unschool the kids.